Video games are really hard, man. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about esports either. There are a ton of games out there, from casual to competitive, that take hours and hours of time, skill, and precision to master. But what if I told you there was someone out there mastering those games with a severe disadvantage? What if I told you there was someone beating some of the hardest games out there with just his chin? And he never had a choice in the matter. Before I tell you the story of one of the most incredible streamers on Twitch, I want to hear from you. If you like these mini profiles we do on streamers, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and let us know in the comments who you want to see us do a profile on next. Look, I've sat here many times and talked to you about Twitch, about the most popular streamers and drama and everything the platform has to offer. But no story has quite blown me away quite like this one. Meet Handy Capable One or Sean Cahill, as he's known offline. The streamer who's beat the kind of games that make us all rage, like Dark Souls 3 and Jump King, except he did it with his chin. On February 11th, Cahill made headlines by beating one of the hardest bosses in Dark Souls 3, Slave Knight Gale. A lot of people refer to Gale as sort of the final boss of the entire Dark Souls series. This guy takes fucking hours to beat. Yes. That took way too long. Holy shit. That took way too long. That took like 10 plus hours. And while beating that difficult boss made a bunch of headlines and it resulted in a bunch of growth for Cahill Online, he's also beat the other two games in the Dark Souls franchise and a difficult platformer called Jump King in the last few months on stream. Yes, we did it. I can breathe. That was the hardest game I've ever played in my life. The next stop for him is Cuphead, another platformer shoot 'em up that he says is much more difficult for him than Dark Souls. For me, at least, Cuphead's harder. Just because the whole time that you're playing, it's very demanding. For me, I have to breathe in between. Since I don't breathe on my own, I have my breathing machine, so I have to take breaths whenever there's downtime. But for Cahill, using his chin isn't a way to display how good he is at games. He doesn't have a choice in the matter. He suffers from a disability called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And to learn more about how he's become so good at these games without using the majority of his body, well, we asked him. So I have uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy and it affects all my muscles in my body. So I would say I'm like practically paralyzed because I can't really move my arms and legs but I can feel everything. And my head, I can barely move, but I can move my chin really well. Cahill's disability is progressive, so when he was young, he was able to play games just fine with his hands. But as he's gotten older, it's worsened. I started feeling it more in high school. Uh, I noticed I couldn't really hold the controllers that well or play as well as others could, so... There was a time, I think, in college, I didn't play much video games at all. By high school, he knew that if he wanted to continue to play games like he did when he was young, he would have to manufacture a controller or a system that would allow him to do so. And so he did. He went out and he found a bunch of controllers and pads that allowed him to continue to play games even as his disability got worse. Yeah, I'd say it's kind of like an evolution of different things. I started playing uh, League of Legends and that required the mouse but also the keys to like do your spells and stuff. So we had like a, a bendable arm that had like a halo that went around my head that had switches on it so I would hit my head on the different switches to cast my different spells. I realized League of Legends is too hard for me. I'd get too angry playing that game. Man, I can't even execute a well-timed flash and this guy is trying to do it with his head. And now he's moved to an Xbox controller controller, using special software to map keys to the controller. So I don't actually use the controller's buttons. So I have the left joystick for movement and dodging. And then I use the D-pad for some buttons and the right joystick for some buttons. Okay, so like I said, when he was younger, his condition got worse and worse and he had to find ways to continue to play games. And once he did that, he decided to take on some of the most difficult games out there. And this is where frustrating games like Dark Souls, Cuphead, and Jump King come in. 
These are games that, while obviously fun and well-designed, are often talked about as hard for the sake of hard. You need to log hours and hours to beat them at the highest difficulty. And let me tell you, they are frustrating as hell. I mean, there are literal competitive communities designed around beating these games in increasingly difficult ways. And once Cahill started to master his new setup, he decided to stream these games. Well, I mean, I was always watching Twitch streamers. I felt like I could always do it, but I just didn't have the, well, I didn't have the internet, wired internet at the time, so I didn't really pursue it. But I eventually, since I don't work and I have a lot of free time, I thought eventually I'll just give it a try and see how it goes. And when it comes to choosing the games themselves, he actually focuses on what is hardest. That's the theme of his channel, him, overcoming the obstacle of these massively hard games, while also obviously overcoming his own obstacles. With that said, speaking to Cahill actually gave us some insight into how he's uniquely well fit for these games. He says that the patience he's developed through just living his everyday life has really helped him beat these games that require a ton of patience to be good at. And he said playing these games, it offers the kind of freedom that he just doesn't always have in his everyday life. But as you might imagine, starting up a stream did come with some risk for him. There are some non-physical difficulties that come with this gig too. The obvious risks of being bullied or tokenized or trivialized. But he says as long as his viewers are positive, he's happy. I mean, I used to feel that way about things like that. Now I've gotten older, I see that maybe they don't know a, a disabled person, so they wouldn't necessarily know how to react to something like that. As long as they're being positive about it, I don't see any issue with it. Cahill did have one bone to pick though. He says that right now, big game developers simply do not make their games accessible enough. He often finds that there are hiccups integrating his software with new games at startup. In fact, he says he can hardly play console games at all right now due to the lack of accessibility. It feels currently a lot of the big name developers, their games aren't accessible enough. Yeah, this is especially true for like uh, shooter games, mm -hmm. FPS. So my favorite game series is Halo. And because of my disability now, I, I can't play Halo anymore. And if they added a feature where it's to do what old uh, console games used to do for shooters, like have a, it would kind of like a sticky aim kind of. I feel like Microsoft might be the only one because also their games are coming to PC as well. It kind of allows me to play their games. So yeah. that means I might be able to give the new Halo game a try. I don't, I don't know, It's it seems, fun like I obviously I like I like the idea of games like that right where it's like kind of like puzzle slash skill where you're like trying to figure out all of the ways to like get past these extremely difficult tasks that it's, sort of thing it's a war of attrition I'm, I know a couple couple two three things about a war of attrition you know yeah yeah war of that's that's the that's the the crux of how to how to be good at magic the Gathering. Wow. you two for one your opponent attrition.